may just make like a one 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 short comment. I think we all discovered through different kind of avenues that power of feedback is equally important as a motivating factor for both instructors mm -hmm. and students. And I do appreciate that, Duncan, that you said that mid-semester feedback mm -hmm. and that mid-course correction that the instructor is willing to do, I mean, not everything, but some reasonable things, is important. And speaking of 8 a.m. class, you know, <laughs> I read all of my teaching evaluations and all the free student comments, and I had one in the course of my 32 years of teaching that I always remember. I'm legendary for teaching 8 a.m. classes. Oh. <laughs> so, and the one that goes this like this. Right? Dr. I makes 8 a.m. class worth showing up for. Oh, wow. That is one of the best kind of a <laughs> yes that. moments for me. <laughs> that, that's my motivation. I know that I'm doing something right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, can I, can I add to that? I, I'd like to hear from the faculty because We've been mm -hmm. talking about how do the students stay motivated, but you guys have had your work cut out for you. <laughs> so tell me how have been ways that you've stayed motivated through the pandemic and, and just with your teaching career with uh, the different obstacles? Oh, it's really an interesting question. I, I will tell you that, uh, so I started in 85 as a professor, so I've been doing it in a while. And the... I, I was in both. <laughs> if, if, if you saw me when I was a junior faculty member on tenure track, oh my gosh, the amount that homework and I, I really worked the students unbelievably hard. You know, I would and there was this uh, I'll say attitude of I needed to be a tough professor. Mm -hmm. I've totally evolved into the I want to give students an enthusiasm for learning. Mm -hmm. I don't care if I get through all the material I want to. I just want to make sure that I've given them that enthusiasm that they can learn it on their own. And you know, so online learning, that's tough to do because I, I really value, I work hard to make sure I know every student's name right out of the gate. So I call them by their first name, I try to learn where they're from and remember these things because to me, I think that helps motivate them that they know that they're not a number. My first five years as a professor weren't here and it was an institution that I was the very first day on the job, my department chair who hired me told me what it was going to take to make tenure. And with respect to teaching, and this is a quote, if you can mumble in front of a board, that's good enough for teaching. We don't care. I was like, whoa, I was kind of taken aback, right? Because my whole motivation to become a professor stemmed from my education here, where I had faculty who cared about my success, took me aside and told me when I needed to do a course correction because of something I was doing, but I was never a number. They knew my name, they would say hello in the hallways, if I was sitting with a group of students, particularly for me, I don't know about the rest of you, but I was an incredible introvert when I came here as a freshman. I was backwards big time. That's and hard. <laughs> I'd never dated, I was, I was walking, talking, <laughs> physics, math nerd, if there ever was one, and, but I was, I was incredibly backwards. And, and I will tell you that a lot of what molded me even as an undergraduate were from my fellow classmates. Mm -hmm. Students that took me, took me under their wing actually to help get me out of my shell. Because mm -hmm. they knew I had something to offer them. I could I got, get hundreds on the exams. It was easy for me. And they wanted to learn. And then they figured out, well, we're going to help you, Wayne. Here's where you're weak. <laughs> and <laughs> Come on, let's go, let's go to a party. Let's go do this. Like, oh, I can't do that. i got to study physics. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> drag you out. So anyway, I, I find that the online issues, I struggle more with that one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. I, I hate to use the word abuse, but I abuse people for fun, you know, <laughs> out of a joke, because it, it lowers that barrier for mm -hmm. communication. They think nothing of walking through my door and, Dr. Heber, I need help with this. Okay, what do you got? You know, and because mm -hmm. I, I don't want any barriers yeah. for learning. And I've let go of thinking that I have to make sure all this content's in their little heads before they, before finals, like, before I give them a final. Like, yeah. no, I've let that go, and uh, and I think it's fine. Yeah. You know, so. yeah, that's really interesting how it's evolved from. You know, you said you came in as new faculty, and you thought you had to be the toughest guy there. <laughs> you oh, know, right. do you think a, maybe new faculty often come in with that sort of idea they have to be really tough? Part of it is uh, related to none of us are trained educators. You know, guess what? I know electronic ceramics incredibly well. I just got my PhD. I'm really good. What do I know about teaching? 
<laughs> that's what I just started a career on. Uh oh. <laughs> and uh, so you tend to model yourself on okay, who did a good job? Who didn't do a good job? What did they do? You know, and, and you know, in my mindset initially was, oh boy, that professor, he really worked me hard. I'm going to be like him because I learned the most in that class. <laughs> but eventually you figure out that it's the you know, one of my. It seems like you do. Uh, the same thing over and over again, year in, year out. So it's like a routine. How do you um, cut that not to win you, like the motivation? Like next year you'll do probably the same classes. I don't that. think it is the same though. Mm -hmm. but, but, you, know, look. I, you know, when you love what you do, motivation is never an issue. I just, I'm actually energized by teaching it. And I will tell the students, you know, this is the best hour of my day. I get to hang out with you, get to teach you something, and you ask me questions, and... It's a calling. Yeah, I... I it is. I'm fortunate and blessed that the thing that I love to do most, I could have a career doing. And, and that's, uh, I, I, I hope that for everybody. Find something you love to do, because then you never work. And maybe I'm odd, but I actually, um, when we get the student evaluations, you know, of course you look at the numbers, but I also actually read the comments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me too. And you know, some of them I take with a grain of salt, and like they complain about an 8 a.m. class, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I kind of you know let that one go. Although <laughs> some do mention that, oh yeah, he makes it worthwhile giving mm -hmm. up at this mm -hmm. ridiculous hour of the morning. <laughs> yeah, um, in the spring. But some of the comments you read, it's like, ooh, that hits kind of close to home. That I'm really messing that up. So then the next semester. I'll make a little change or a big change to try to address that. So I, you know, I've been teaching since almost as long as Wayne since 1990. So you know, there have been incremental improvements, I hope, but also some more significant jumps that I've changed in my teaching approach over the years. Mm -hmm. Comes, comes down to loving learning. I still love to learn, mm -hmm. and for us now in more recent years, it's been learning how to adapt to the pandemic, adapt to online learning, still be able to give the students what they need to succeed and don't let any extraneous factors impact that. And you touched on something too, which is spot on, which is the struggle between getting through all the material or, as opposed to teaching it with quality and at a rate that they can take it in. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I tend to err on the side like you do of, eh, if I don't cover something, that's okay, because if they have a good foundational start, they can learn that missing piece on their own. <laughs> works. Yeah, I think, you know, I don't know about, um, you know, you, Hank, but I think when you worked in the industry as well, right? It's, nope. You never have. Nope. Okay, well, well, the, well, a little bit. A little bit. Well, you know, my career, you know, and I started in 1989 in my home country, did eight years there, and then I came, and this is my 25th year here. But, you know, once in a while when the economy was tough in Russia, you know, in 1990s, I had to leave academia for a couple of years to become, you know, I led advertising agency, then I was a sales manager for a five-star hotel. I mean, real no kidding. Oh, no kidding. Well, I got to hear some of these so, stories. But, <laughs> but the thing is, I always knew I was missing. I was missing the classroom. I was missing that sort of interaction. And this is something that I really felt in the early fall of this semester. I taught all of my classes online last year and they were perfectly done. But once I stepped in the first class this semester, the first thing I told my students, guys, I missed you. Mm -hmm. And they said, we missed you too. <laughs> and, and that was the aha moment because we discovered something. Yes, there are convenience of online, there is the flexibility, but that real interaction that, you, that energy that you create collectively when you do something useful and fun at the same time, yeah. it's extremely difficult to do remotely. Mm -hmm. So, and, and time and time again, when you said boring, the same thing, if you think about teaching as a formula, the textbook may be the same. The, you know, like gravity formula did not change ever, you know, since dawn of civilization. But one variable changes always, and that is your class. Oh, yeah. The students, different the type people. of students, different people, and, and, and that variable that allows you to experiment, right? Get new ideas and find new ways how you approach, you know, that material um, dissemination. I think that's what drives me because honestly, I tell even graduate students, and I've done work with you guys for quite some time, like, Every time I go to the class, 
I don't know how the first class is going to go. It can go either way. I mean, I can predict because I know the tips and tricks and, you know, all the, you know. But again, it doesn't go the same way every, every single year. year. Yeah. Or class to class in a week. It is different because we have that variable. And that is something that we need to account for. That makes it fun and a challenge. Big challenge. I'm just thinking, 1980, so you probably guys started with a chalk on your blackboard. Oh, yeah. Board. Mm -hmm. And then switch to the whiteboard with marker and I then still went it online. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? It paces me. Yeah. It it prevents me from going too fast over anything. No. But probably with your generation, you guys have seen some of the most changes with teaching than mm -hmm. a lot of other generations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You think that's true? Yeah, I mean, Wayne and I punched computer cards to write computer programs. <laughs> <laughs> My first computer was processor 286, and the uh, operating system was Norton Commander. If you remember that one, the blue and yellow screen with, uh, you know, punching F1, F F3 buttons. When I tell my students these days, like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, well, <laughs> right, right. Well, floppy computer, disks? Yeah, in a computer program I ran as a graduate student, you know, it would take three or four days to get sent to the supercomputer and then a day to run on the supercomputer. That same program today, you know, runs in five minutes, mm. wow. which that drastically changes what kinds of assignments you can give students. Right, right, yeah. Well, last question, because we're about out of time, but I asked the students this, so I'm curious to hear the faculty's answer. <laughs> what do you think um, is a, something that students don't understand about faculty members' schedule? About our schedule? Yeah, or about your, just the, a day in the life of a professor. I think that's it right there. It's the schedule. How many things, how many hats we wear, how many balls we juggle on a daily basis. Yeah, so w what are some of those things that you guys are dealing with? Oh gosh, committees, um, student emails, um, course preparation, you know, if you have a TA or a grader coordinating to make sure they're doing a good job. Uh, like right now, for example, um, one of my PhD students is teaching one of our orbits class, we're just teaching a section, so I'm mentoring her on a daily basis to make sure we're staying in sync with our lectures and that she's you know, this is our first time teaching, so that has, mm -hmm. but that takes a lot of my time mm -hmm. to ensure quality of instruction on, in her section. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, then, then there's the research side, right, of writing proposals. Uh, if it's accepted, then, you know, doing the research. Then when the research is done, writing papers, writing reports, uh, the, the pay, just the paperwork for doing, you know, the, the, um, the budget management of, and I think Wayne's better at this than I am, he could comment more than I can, but just that, you know, the accounting, I don't know about you, but the accounting system that we have for picking our budget is just, I, I don't get it. Mm -hmm. So to understand how much money I've spent and what I have left is always challenging. Mm -hmm. So I spend a lot of time pretending I'm an accountant, <laughs> which I'm not and I hate. Mm -hmm. So yes, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's an endless list of things to do. Like, and it's not like, you know, an, an eight to five job where, oh, okay, I'm done, I can take a break. There's mm. always more that we can do. Mm. So the day could literally never end. Yeah. The to-do list never, never ends. Yeah. But I love it. <laughs> you know, I love my job. That's, that's good. I think we're all motivated by, and students as well, we, uh, we like to be our own boss. <laughs> and it, so I think what, what Hank just described there realistically is um, we, we self-abuse. <laughs> you know, it's never 40 hours. It's, you know, I, what's the last thing I do before I go to bed? Check my emails. You do. I'm laying in bed and my phone's blooping at me. I know it's, <laughs> it, it's, 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 hard. it's horrible in that regard. <laughs> but, and, and maybe if I had, uh, one of the things I, I always liked about my department, because we're small, is the students see the human side of us as well. They know we're fathers, now grandfather. They know that we're just like them. And sometimes when something unexpected occurs, you know, that we're not able to get something graded in a timely manner or something like that. If we treat the students as humans as well, given an extension, something happened, it's like, I got it, it's okay. You know, you don't worry about this. You know, take care of your family first, do those things, we'll figure out how to help you out at the end. You do that for them, they do it for you. Because mm. we're human, we're human too, you know, with the same frailties same personal challenges, same things outside. 
because if there's one thing I value most about being a professor here versus my former institution, I could actually be a good father and husband and a good professor here. I didn't lose out on the kind of balance of life I wanted. Yeah. And when students recognize that you're seeking the same balance of life that they're seeking, mm -hmm. they want to enjoy life too. Not not all books and equations and such. Then uh, mm -hmm. it works out yeah. nice. So I think just the knowing we're human too. I think it's important also for especially you know all students come to us as freshmen, and when you go through regular high school, right? All you see is the you know your your teachers are at school. You know they come at certain time and they're there with you, and all they do all day long and they teach you, right? And they take take care of you. So a lot of freshmen come here with the assumption that faculty at the you know institution of higher learning will be the same, and really we we're, we're not. So it needs to be explained. For example, you know why are you not always in your office? Well, because I have other application outside my office, and, and that's why we need to schedule these things, right? Like, you, you don't sit there, uh, wait for somebody to drop by 12 hours a day. Um, and, uh, Wayne, you, you did a great job pointing out that they need to see instructors not as somebody who is in charge of their grade and their lives for this coming 16 weeks and well, by golly, you know, all that, you know. But, but as a human being, I think sharing your personality with your students in class and let them understand that you're a human being. You also have your own set of problems, issues, and challenges. But at the same time, I'm a firm believer that a professor has to be a good actor as well. Because we're not allowed to bring a lot of our baggage and dump it on our students. And especially important with the young faculty members who come with less experience and greater deal of challenges, less of experience. They really, I mean, um, yes, sometimes you need to, before you step into a classroom, you need to put everything aside and, you know, zero focus in on something that is more important than you. And that is the well-being of your students for the next two hours, three hours, how many hours there is. And it's tough. But a worthy battle, nonetheless. It is. It, it certainly is. You do a good job.